Just about three minutes before the hour of seven o'clock, welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, communications expert Dr. Madonna Doyle is the founder of Madonna Doyle and Associates, or MDA. In January this year, the company relaunched after 27 years in the business and 25 years as a registered company. MDA is a communication consulting firm that fosters thriving workplaces through joyful conversations, coaching, training, and customized organizational transformation interventions. Dr. Doyle's recently completed Dr oral thesis provides evidence of a direct relationship between leadership communication style and employees work engagement. Dr. Doyle is also an author of three publications and she joins us this morning to discuss ways to resolve organizational leadership and communication challenges. Dr. Doyle, good morning. Blessings to you, Kimberly. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> what a resume. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is really impressive. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, my pleasure <laughs> being here. All right, now joyful conversation. So that to me was one of the very interesting things. I mm. mean, what do you mean by joyful conversations and how practical is that really? Yes, yeah, and, and thank you so very much. It's it's really a passion, but I want to just um, step back a yeah, bit. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been, and, and the intro indicated that for over 27 years, we've been in the field. Yes. So I've been into media yeah. as a producer, writer, uh, talk show host, and so on. And then we entered into organizational communication. And over the years, what we have noticed, you know, you may train persons for two days, but they go back in a context in an organization that may be very toxic. Yeah. And that disturbed me. And over the years, we began to say to, 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 to recognize and take note of uh, the leadership. And leadership for us is not just the person at the top, but really influence. And we look at how that leadership influence impacts the context and the culture of departments and organizations. And you look at uh, how people, how employees are either engaged or not engaged based on that climate yeah. and culture and context. And then I began to do some studies around myself as a leader and what's going on in the workplace. And recognize that and another thing to recognize is that this, this country is so blessed, but yet we are stymied and we are set back by so many um, challenges that have to deal with the people. And that's another thing I'll, I'll come to. <laughs> and, and therefore, the whole issue of the context of the organization, the culture of the organization, and the need for joy in the workplace. And don't forget, you know, it's over years. And the whole issue around how um, employees engage one another, engage their leaders, and create a space in which they feel fulfilled. And so that has been the journey. And now, evolving from that, and my thesis is that this we've created these joyful leadership conversations. Now, a joyful leadership conversation for us has four elements. One. We really want to connect with the other. So they are communication encounters. And one, one, one factor is that you connect. And that's a deep piece, right? Because it goes beyond the head into the heart and even the practical dimension of um, connecting. Two, you bridge in cultures. And that's in a, in a multicultural context that is Trinidad and Tobago. That's really the globe, actually. Yeah. You need to bridge cultures. The third thing, the third element, is that aligning with positive leadership behaviors. So we're really talking about um, leaders modeling the kinds of behaviors so that your communication encounters represent and reflect the positive um, examples that you're setting. And then the fourth dimension of uh, joyful leadership conversation has to do with the emotionally intelligent part. The other person, we must feel that things are going well, that life is being lived well, that the organization is doing well. So that's how we frame the leadership, um, joyful leadership conversations. And in organizations where you need to have um, uh, precise communication when you do it, when you're looking at operational efficiency, when you, when, um, and engage in conversations when you're looking at how do we motivate persons. And the third thing that we, we specialize in is the, the, the conversations that help um, solve or resolve conflict issues. So that's a mouthful. <laughs> you know, I was, and I was listening intently to what you're saying, uh, Dr. Doyle, because everything sounds, it sounds good in a perfect world. But as you rightly said, that context that you were talking about, you know, so there are the employees who don't want to engage. They want to come to work. They want to do what they have to do and they want to leave. And so how do you work around that type of employee that thinks that they don't need that connection? They just need to do what they were hired for. Yeah, that's a good question. And the thing is that 
Some employees may not be a correct fit at the point in time in the organization, but they will need the money. They want to pay their mm -hmm. mortgages. They want to see about the children and so on. And we ask now, because um, employees are more loyal to their own life's purpose and passion and so on. So we say, if you're spending six weeks or six years or 60 years in an organization, it will help you in a number of ways. One, if you're looking to move on, what are the connections, the people connections you can make that will eventually be your customers? Mm. How can you grow in expertise and skills? How can you learn to relate to one another? And these are transferable skills. So you may at this point in time just want to give me my money, etc. But the skills of succeeding in this particular context where you are will help you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And that's why these soft skills are really, really hard. Because you're so right. Some people just say, give me my money. I want to move on. But in that transaction, there are skills, there are attitudes and approaches that you will learn so that you can navigate to your, navigate life, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, interestingly, uh, one of the programs that we, that we offer is called uh, Negotiating, Achieving and Negotiating Work-Life Harmony. Mm -hmm. We move away from work-life balance, and we invite persons to look at their seasons, their life seasons, and where you are right now, particular organization or where you are, and how now do you master your own season in this space? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's another big piece of it. I like that you mentioned the, the transferable skills because I'm also wondering how much does this um, issue relate to productivity levels at work? <laughs> you know, you know that, that the, the whole issue of productivity is a major stumbling block mm -hmm. um, in, for our economic growth in this country. This country and is um, blessed. I've been a practicing Christian. I tell people since Adam was creeping. <laughs> since Adam was creeping. Yeah. I never heard that one before. <laughs> and, and this country is blessed with, with um, natural resources and human resources. We right. have a high concentration of creative people. And that's documented. But yet we are, we are facing a, a decaying uh, social fabric. Mm -hmm. um, low productivity, low business competitiveness. But the data have shown, and, and you know, um, the Chambers of Commerce here, um, thought leaders, uh, policy makers, it's right there in our Vision 2030 document, the IDB, everybody has recognized that the core of that low productivity, one of the major things, is poor management, mm -hmm. poor leadership. And therefore, I looked at that and said, but wait, I could help, because I'm really a patriot. And John Maxwell says, you know, everything rises and falls on leadership. But leadership rises and falls on communication. And what you've noticed with the COVID lockdown, where there are a lot of work from home arrangements, your brick and mortar um, business could go down, but with your communication, you can survive. You can thrive, actually. And that really is the core. And in fact, the literature on, um, on commu organizational communication suggests that that is the core of your business, mm. communication. How you treat with people how you engage your customers and therefore it is not the the whole thing about leadership communication and and joyful leadership conversations is not divorced from productivity productivity you can measure work engagement you can measure and there's a direct um, relationship that we've found between the work engagement and the leadership communication style of the organization. Now, Dr. Doyle, you have done the research. Yes, you have done the research, you have yeah. worked in the organization, you have so many years of experience under your belt. How can your association help us as employees and even the larger national economy as a whole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me start with the national <laughs> economy because, because the data, and, and uh, what, 2018, I think it was, the planning minister, Camille Robinson Regis, echoing the IDB findings around low productivity and how it's timing our gl global competitiveness, yeah. right? And, uh, but we still, and I think it's even worse because the president recently, the president, Her Excellency, recently lamented on the level of discourse in the mm. society. It's coarse, it is, a, it is toxic. Even His Grace the Archbishop earlier this year talked about that. So, so there are some workplace issues mm -hmm. to resolve around productivity. There's a level of communication and discourse in this society, that social exchange in this society, that, right? And now organizations who want to get out of COVID, 
You've got to treat your people differently. And that's where communication, and we're talking uh, written communication, spoken communications, interpersonal uh, communication. Those are the key things. How do you treat your people to motivate them, to empower them, to contribute greater? And that's where we come in. And we've seen results over the years that when you treat with the people issues, that the people do the work for you. And that's really the deep challenge of leaders. How do you harness the human resources that God has given you? Because we are very, and the, the literature shows, we are very creative around Carnival Time, you know. Very productive, yeah, yeah. very creative. And even when we go to the Metropole, bang, we good. So it's not to say that you don't have the innate ability and the skills to be innovative, creative, and productive. And our approach at MDA is to help the organization see and harness those energies for greater output mm -hmm. and greater satisfaction of the employee, yeah. right? When, when people see that they're contributing to a larger, a larger thing, a bigger purpose, and some of the things that we have done help organizations see and, and help employees see that they're contributing to something that's bigger and even that it could benefit themselves, mm -hmm. right? And we want to be able to measure, and we do measure that uh, um, growth in employees and in organizations. Mm. And yeah. I also know, Dr. Doll, you are promoting one of your books, the recent book that ah, you wrote. Tell us about it, yes. please. <laughs> conversation capsules. And of course, you see the theme. Yes, the, of the, course. Yeah, conversation capsules at work. Yes. You know, this is a mini book, and it's interesting because it's a book of quotes and anecdotes ah. around the five um, communication skills, listening, speaking, connecting, relating, and mediating conflicts, right? Right. So we have this book. And let me just do, I don't know how much we time we have again. <laughs> we have a few minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> So here are this quote. So it starts off with an anecdote, real anecdotes from business in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago. There is this anecdote that I love that my sister related uh, in which a gentleman, a pensioner, would come to the bank every day. And they, they, began, they, know him, they knew him, but he had this attitude that he used to work in an oil company, so you have to treat me with respect. And then he said, um, so she typed in the, his account, and she just said, from the time he reached the, the, um, the, his, the teller's booth, she just said, well, your, your check hasn't arrived. And she said the scorn with which he looked at her, <laughs> she was amazed. And then she referred it to somebody yes, else. Yes. And, now, Dr. Um, Doyle, I'm getting the countdown, so give me a quick two-liner, okay. right, and then we can go quickly. Right, okay. So just one quote from the book, <laughs> an angry man stirs up a quarrel, but he that is slow to anger calms a quarrel. And this is from the section on conflict. Yes. This book is available on Amazon in all formats, in print, in, in Kindle, and in audio format. Is so it available at any of our local bookstores as yet? Not as yet, Not but yet. they can call our office, 307-5703, mm -hmm. and we can um, get it to persons, right? Mm -hmm. So. Conversation, Conversation capsules, capsules at work. <laughs> Dr. Doyle, I can talk to you for the entire day because I, I love what you were talking about in terms of the communication, the conflict resolution. Remember the different cu cultures coming together, yes. different personalities, yeah. and you will get that clash. But I appreciate what you have shared with us this morning. I hope that people go on Amazon, Kindle, get the book. And of course, when we, you can also call you as well to get yes. a copy. Yes. One more time, the phone number. 307. Five seven zero three. Nice, Dr. Doyle. Thanks a lot for coming <laughs> It'll be in. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so very much. And that was Dr. Doyle, uh, who is actually promoting her, her new book. Remember, it's available on Amazon and also on Kindle. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us.